So um, today I'm going to try coloring this piece, uh, which you've already seen photos of on Facebook and Instagram and where have you. Um, of course, the, a couple days back I sprained a tendon in my thumb, so gripping things is a little tricky. Uh, I won't be wearing the brace while I'm doing this, obviously. And it's also about 50 degrees in here and damp because it's been raining today so this should prove to be somewhat interesting but we'll see how it goes uh, for the actual coloring process I'll probably speed up the video a little bit so it'll go a little faster otherwise this is going to be an eight hour long video and nobody wants to watch all that all right so here we go, let's see how it goes. I'm starting my coloring with Copec Warm Gray markers for the skin tones. These match the Strathmore toned paper pretty nicely. Now one thing you need to remember about Copec markers, uh, especially with the lighter colors or with the warm grays or the cool grays, is they go down fairly dark when they're wet and then as they dry they get lighter. So I'm starting with a number four for my deep shadows and then working up to a three, two, and a one. And that'll give me some pretty good looking skin tones on the tone paper without actually having any color in it. Uh, but then once I start adding actual colors, both translucent with the Copec markers and opaque using pens or paints, the contrast of the two will be pretty extreme and really look really good because all the colors will really pop out. So here I've started to lay in some colors from my chrome work. Uh, I'm using a ice blue on the upper side of the chrome for the reflection of the sky and then I'm using a brown, I don't recall which one at the moment, uh, for the lower portion of the chrome in order to suggest the ground reflection. Uh, once all that's all laid in I'll actually go back and put in white highlights which you'll see later. Uh, for the tires which you see I'm working on a little bit here and there. I'm using cool grays, which contrast a lot with the warm grays. You can actually do uh, an entire illustration using warm gray and cool gray, and the two will look significantly different from each other. And uh, you can create the illusion of color with just total grayscales. So anyways, uh, like I was saying, uh, I'm adding a lot of blues and purples and uh, some brown tones here and there to simulate the, the, the idea of chrome. And then uh, once that's all done and everything else is finished color-wise, I'll start adding in white highlights. And we'll see that in a little bit, just as soon as we get all this coloring finished. So one of the things you can do is you can put gray marker down and then use color on top of the gray marker. And this creates the illusion of having used multiple colors or, shadow, or shadows while only using actually one color. Uh, in, on the tank I used a gray marker to create a shadow and then put the yellow down on top of it and the gray will take on some of that yellow. Now you can see I'm doing the hair and I've been using a cool blue and a very mild violet in order to create shape and shadows on her hair uh, which will stand out a lot more once I start putting in the white. Uh, briefly there you saw me using some gel pens to add color to her lips. The gel pens are solid color so they really stand out against the translucent colors. 
Here I'm starting to put in white highlights. Uh, this is a Sharpie paint pen. It's the water-based one. Uh, don't use the oil-based ones. They tend to bleed the oil into the paper and that can be a mess. Again, I'm doing more highlighting using the white Sharpie. This is the extra fine. It has a, a very fine tip and uh, it's fairly controllable. You have to be a little careful. Sometimes for really small areas I'll use a gel pen instead. And now as you can see I'm adding the highlights into the chrome. And this is where the chrome will really start to look a lot more like chrome is once you start putting in those white highlights. The entire illustration once the white has been added in will really just pop out because all the colors are translucent but now I'm using opaque white which just highlights everything dr very dramatically and, and it, it, everything like I say just really pops out and becomes very intense so you have the contrast of the subtle soft tones versus the hard tones of the of the white highlights another thing to remember about the sharpie paint pen is uh, because the paper does absorb the moisture from it they tend to get slightly lighter once it dries so sometimes you need to go over the same line a couple of times in order to bring up the the color density but that's not a big problem generally now I'm putting in the highlights in her pants and by the time I'm done everything will have highlights in it the, they'll, the entire illustration uh, hairlines you'll see that it'll start having a lot more body once I start putting all these lines in little skulls more, more gel pen along the face because the face is fairly small the gel pen is a lot safer to make use of for the the fine lines that needed there here I'm using uh, bleed proof white which is a, a very dense white paint for the super highlights and the reason I use that is again because it's just extremely white and the colors won't bleed through it and uh, it just it, it's a much more powerful white than the Sharpie is and and you can see that in, in the hair in particular where the the white uh, just covered those lines and it just creates these super hot spots here we're taking a nice close-up look and you can really see what I'm talking about with those, those white highlights they just are super hard and and very bright the thing I really like about using tone paper as opposed to white paper is the tone paper tends to set back into the background and really allow colors and highlights and the entire illustration to just pop out off the page. It's an effect that's hard to get with white paper without coloring everything. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's probably been a fairly long one. I hope you'll subscribe to our channel and uh, help us out, you know, by subscribing. All right, see you on the next one.